You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible Sex and Humour in the Book of Esther You know I'd never realised that Esther was funny Well, the topic is so serious and so extreme and the messages preached on passages like that for such a time as this are so challenging that it just hadn't crossed my mind that the story was funny until one day a Jewish friend of mine was telling me about how when at Purim they act out the story the children all want to be Haman villains always make the best parts in a drama and suddenly I began to spot it lots of the humor in Esther is related to sex and gender that all gets set up or hinted at right at the beginning in the very first chapter where Esther wins the beauty contest after the all-powerful King Ahasuerus proves incapable of controlling his wife Vashti and then in chapter 5 there's the scene where taking her courage in her hands Esther enters the royal presence without permission a dangerous thing to do and in verse 2 as soon as the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court she won his favor and he held out to her the royal scepter that was in his hand then Esther approached and touched the top of the scepter the king said to her what is it Queen Esther and the story goes on you see a thread running through this story has been the conflict between the genders and sexuality and then we get to the bit where Haman the villain has pr plotted his plots he's even had an enormous 50 cubit that's 25 meters high gallows built where his enemy Mordecai Esther's uncle can be impaled there's the byplay where Haman honors Mordecai in royal robes in a public procession much against his will and then in chapter 7 there's the private party so the king and Haman went in to feast with Queen Esther on the second day as they were drinking wine the king said again to Esther what is your petition Queen Esther it shall be granted you what is your request even to half my kingdom it shall be fulfilled then Queen Esther answered if I have won your favor O king and if it pleases the king let my life be given me that is my petition and the lives of my people that is my request for we have been sold I and my people to be destroyed to be killed to be annihilated if we have been sold merely as slaves men and women I would have held my peace but no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther who is he and where is he that has presumed to do this Esther said a foe and an enemy this wicked Haman then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen understandably so at which point mysteriously Ahasuerus wanders off seems he wants to pick some roses in the garden or something when in verse 8 he returns from the palace to the banquet of wine Haman was throwing himself down on the couch where Esther was lying the king exclaimed will he also attempt to rape the queen while I'm still in the building now the translation here is uh, a little bit questionable translations range from assault the NRSV to rape in the net Bible which I just read probably the JPS is the best for this word it's a bit ambiguous will he even force the Queen before me in the house this scene is pure farce an all-powerful King a beautiful Queen and a cringing but terrible villain sprawled across the beautiful Queen on the couch begging for his life you see what I mean pure farce of course the serious messages remain in the book of Esther we can still preach about for such a time as this and we can still take delight in the wonderful ways in which God redeems and sets free his people but all the while as we watch the children act out the story we're watching a farce and we should be laughing too laughing with sheer joy and delight at the stuff that God who's unmentioned in the story has done bye for now